The Uncensored Philly Sports Podcast is in the building, as they used to say. We here after Sixers and Suns game. Sixers lose to the Suns, 116-113. Exciting game down on the wire, barn burner. Um, we still missing without Ben Simmons, without Tobias Harris. Uh, the bench player, second unit, played well tonight, down on the wire. But it was a good game, but we, we just didn't have it tonight. 116-113. Who wants to go first? Who wants to d- dive into this game first? My biggest issue with this game... I'm not even going to talk about Mike Scott. Mike Scott at least made four of his, what, three of his four shots or four of five. He he hit his open layups tonight, even though uh, his defense wasn't that great. And he only had like one rebound. Shake Milton is a problem. Shake Milton is getting to be a problem. I, and I honestly, when they get back in there, I, Matt, when, when the other guys come back in, Maxie has to take some of his minutes because Maxie gave a lot of energy tonight and, and, and the spark and the attack. George Hill was solid. I, I like what I saw from George Hill. And I think Doc took too long to put Embiid back in the game. I think he was stuck between if he wanted to let Embiid sit out the rest after Embiid did the dramatic fall and holding his knee again like he always do. And and Doc took his time bringing him back in. He should have brought him in a little bit sooner. And I think we'd have won this. Why do you, why do you always think the bull be acting when he, when he get hurt? Like, if he hurt, he hurt. No, mm. but l- come on, listen, don't act like we don't know this from uh, the, his whole career. <laughs> Whenever he, he takes any kind of fall, he's all extra dramatic, holding the knee, holding the knee like he just out for the seat. Remember, we used to grab our, everybody used to hold their breath as soon as he fell. Cause like, oh man, he a little bad. Then next thing you know, he come running out there and he doing Euro steps again. Like, his pain threshold might not be that high. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think he acting. I mean, if he got hurt, he got hurt. But I mean, he did every, all these coaches got the exact time they want to bring their players in. Like he know is it's a, it's a very methodical, calculated thing, especially when dealing with your, your best player in your team. I mean, they do it with all the they that remember remember how LeBron when when uh when uh what's his name Tyrone Lue used to coach Cleveland. It was a certain type time he brought him in, brought him back out. It, it was the same to do the same thing with Curry. He it's a, it's a certain point at a fourth quarter he brings him back in. He plays the whole first, takes him out in the second half. Oh, it's 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 clockwork. It, it ain't too much, but it ain't supposed it's, to always be like that. You you, it, you don't understand. Remember, you, you gotta remember, we got a back to back tomorrow, eh? Then don't play him at all. Then then don't play him at all. If you see everybody else, unless it's the playoffs, coaches normally going to stick to with their routine because the player in his mind he has a routine as well, so he knows when he's kind of coming back in. And I don't know if it's a good. I think it's more of a good thing too for the player too. It's a routine thing. So, I mean, could he probably put him back in a minute before? Yeah, but this is how this is how he always does it. So he ain't going to change it, at least not until the playoffs start. I, bottom line is, other bulls got to step up when 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 our story's in the game. They tried, but, I mean, we was out, man. We was out gun. They had pretty much all they started. I, I don't watch Phoenix that closely, but I don't think they was missing nobody. They had Chris Paul. They had Booker. They had Mikel Bridges. They had Ed, Anton, what's his name? Aiton, however you say his name. He was in the game. They had all their players. He was missing two starters. So, three, but for the simple starters. fact, three, three starters. starters. That's why I forgot. See, I mean, actually two, because Seth should be coming off the bench. But anyway, um, <laughs> Wish McCall played better than George Hill actually came in and played better than Seth's been playing lately. But the, the fact of the matter is, they was ready to go. I didn't even – I thought we was going to lose this game before the game even started because we were missing Toby in fact. The, the the dudes we had, they tried, but I mean they came up a little short at the end. I mean, I'm not even really mad. Hats, hats All right. off to the go ahead. Thank you. Um, as far as the game goes, I thought that um I saw some good things. I like the fact that um Tyrese Maxey, he came in and he actually played a very solid game. I thought he, he actually he gave more than solid. I think he played a pretty great game to be to be honest. Thibel defense on Booker was was special. He played him to the end. To, no, but even to the end, great players are gonna make plays. Yeah, no, I agree. They, great players are gonna make great plays, and so he's a great player. So he he did what he's supposed to do. But he held him, I think, was seventeen points, and really he hit like maybe seven late in the game. So really he had ten points throughout the entire game. That was courtesy of of Thibel. Thibel did his thing today. Now, Wayne, I agree with you as far as Shake Milton is no longer playable. The reason why is because he loses focus during the game. Like mentally, there's like mental blocks where he just go to a, like he see a squirrel, like squirrel, 
that's that's where it is <laughs> at that point. He really loses, <laughs> and, and it's, it's it's affecting. Like he turns the ball. You can't play him on the ball at all. You can't play him on the ball at all. And that, go ahead. I get in. Yeah, go ahead. No. All right, cool. I I, I believe I actually Sixers play a heck of a game. We was blistering from three, shooting like fifty two percent and over fifty percent from the field. So Sixers were blistering tonight. Turnovers were a problem. Shake was a problem. I agree. Out of the sixteen turnovers we had, Shake had four, and Embiid had eight. Mm. So we 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 do got to tighten that up. But I, I'm not really be honest with you. I'm not mad at this loss. I'm actually. Um, if, if if what can you say? Uh, Encourage. Yeah, well, it, 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 I expected I to know. lose. Like Ephraim said, I expected to lose. That was me. When you, when you look, when you looked at who was playing, no, I said that. We all, I think we all expected to lose this game. Yeah. But without without Ben and Toby, you all expected to lose this game. I, I listen. I love, and I'm not trying to take a shot at you. I love Maxi on D. Yo, can meet your phone, zero, bro? That's not my phone. Of course, on my computer. That was the zero, microwave going off. Oh. Zero points from Maxi. Even though you shut Booker down, he was zero points. And what was he shooting? He was shooting bad, so he didn't have. Oh, you talking about you talking about Thibel? Yes, Matisse. Yeah. I'm sorry, I said yeah. Maxi. Yeah. I love Matisse's defense, but zero points. Oh, I, I got it. Uh, yeah, I got to see a little better from him, man. Because that you got to do. I agree. You know, I mean, attack only- a little more, but. I, he I, carried I, the load, though. Then what do you have? Fourteen straight. He did. That's why. That's why I'm saying I'm not. I'm just saying if we're going to put him be back in the game, if, if you're going to put him be back in this game, and we're going to play, because if if that's the case, put him in there. Let's go for that win. Like put him in a little bit earlier. Like we was. I think we was up. Like I mean, what we it was like a, a two point three point game, and then like two plays, two three plays too long. He left that bench in there and, and they just ran off on us and got up like 10 points. So, but, but I mean, I, I understand what y'all saying about, you know what I'm saying? Him in the rotation. Um, also, we got to show Danny Green some love. Danny Green was out there balling. Uh, he that We had a stretch where Danny was knocking down shots. We had a stretch where Maxi carried us. They did their job. And I, I thought, I thought George Hill played decent. He played better than he did the first game. Yeah. I and, forgot what it was like to have somebody didn't do a step back three points. Um, yeah. I haven't, we didn't see that in years. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see if we're going to go in there with our full team tomorrow or if Embiid's going to sit out now because, you know, he, he tweaked his knee. Now, what we, lost this game, we lost this game a large part due to a no-name dude. Now, no disrespect to this dude, Carter, but, come, like, he was 29% for the year on threes, and this boy rains down like three or five. That was three, Chris Paul. He? Three That's, or four. Three or four three. Paul. No, 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 no. I'm talking about Jay Carter. The dudes with the ball head started hitting from the sideline. I, I don't even Chris, remember. Courtesy of Chris Paul. No, I'm just was, saying, I, I'm telling you, go ahead, Ephraim. I know what you're saying. He hit, he set him up with the pass, but we left him wide open because we didn't. He, I, I, I would have left him open too. He's 29%. He's not a three point shooter. That ain't why he was getting left wide open, though. And he knocked him down. He, he got wide open because they went small ball and we had Mike Scott out there, couldn't stay in front of nobody. And so when they do the rotation and everybody start rotating around, somebody's going to get open eventually. Now I ain't saying it's just yeah. Mike Scott every time it happened, but a lot you of times this will happen. But go ahead, you trying to hit on Mike? No, I no, I, because this is what I'm saying when I'm saying his defense wasn't that great. His defense was horrible. Now, horrible. since we brought up Mike Scott, I do got. I, I will have to say this. Um, I think a, I think. Remember Wayne? I remember you brought up. You want to see Mike Scott do more attack the basket? He actually did that tonight. I think the way the coaching is set up with Ben in the game. Mike's job is to stay out there and hit threes. Tonight, you seen him play a little differently, was which ben I think was yesterday? coaching. Was Ben in the game the last game? No, but okay, he's seen he had to change it. But he's seen he had to change it. You act like you can't change something from one game to another to the next. Well, I like him to change from grabbing one rebound in twenty something minutes as a power forward. Oh, right, who started though? Who started the power forward? What they get? How many they get? Um, I don't know who started. One of our guards. Yeah, who started? How many they get? Three, two. Yep, exactly. Three, two, two. Um, and Mike Scott got one. He's a power forward getting one rebound and can't play defense. He got three. And and you want to talk about him cutting to the basket. He got set up a couple nice times by George Hill, and he was scared to shoot it and just ran yeah. from under the basket. Straight, straight, he got straight. He was straight scared to shoot. Quit the ball. <laughs> what was he, three for four tonight? Yeah, wide open shots. Yeah, when they got him mm-hmm. wide open laps, he hit him. 
He didn't have wide open layups. He had a couple turnarounds, and you didn't see that. No, I, he. What you talking about? The one when he pushed off and they called the offensive foul and they didn't count? Nah, he had a turnaround, Wayne. I don't know what game he was watching. Oh yeah, he yeah. He, he, no, he made a nice little power move on one undersized guy one play. He did. But I, I will get. I will say that to Tim's point, CP <clears throat> CP three was definitely the, the major contributing factor to why they won this game. He he was balling. I mean, he hold on. He, let me see from say that again. Because remember, we had this conversation. Not, nah, but I do want to address this though, because I want to address uh, Jay Mar. In the comment section, right? Remember the last po- podcast, I was talking about Curry deserves to be an MVP. And Jay Morris says that how Steph Curry is going to be an MVP in his, in his team and don't have enough wins, right? But then Jay Mar goes on to say that Chris Paul carried his team to a six seed in the playoffs with OKC last year. I want to address that because Chris Paul is a great player. But let's get it clear. Let's set the record straight for everybody who thinks that Chris Paul carried OKC's team into the playoffs last year and got him a six seed. That's not true. Chris Paul was the second or third lead in scoring that team, and he didn't even average over six. So he has he averaged six like six point two assists a game. So that's to me is no way you can tell me that a dude who's the second or third, I think maybe the if third you- lead in scoring the team, and don't even average. Over seven to six, over six assists, carried the team by himself to the. Now was he a, a, a integral part? Yeah, I'm not saying he wasn't, but this narrative that Chris Paul was the dominating force why they won, and only him, and he was the major contributor factor. I'm not buying it because my eyes ain't telling me that when I look at the stats, it don't say that. Now I didn't watch that many OKC games. I'm going record to say I didn't watch a whole bunch of OKC games. But the stats is telling me a lot different. You can't go by the stats. No, you can't go there because like, he let. No, why not? Listen, Boy, listen, let, listen. Let me he jump led in. them. He, he didn't. He he didn't carry them, but he definitely led them. And what if nobody you, said he did. If you watched the day, if you watched the, today's game, you saw the impact of Chris Paul on that team. They don't win this game without Chris Paul today. Oh yeah, I, and let me before you jump in, your boy Steph Curry was asked like and BB asked if he should be the MVP. This is what Steph said. I got to be. I'm probably not going to get it, but whatever. So, it's like, mm-hmm. all the players, when eggs, they say, yes, yep. I'm the MVP. And you know what they happened? Stop hating on Joel. Nope, nope, when nope, they nope, Joel, I'm like, nope, I'm the MVP. nope, because I'm hating on Steph, too. And you know what happened? He says that and goes out and lays a clunker. He went, like, six for, like, 25, and, and, and his team lost. So that's what happens when you run your mouth and you talk about, yeah, I'm the MVP. You got, now you go out there and lay a complete clunker. He was two for like 13 or 15 from three and they lost. Well, so I take that. that. So Monday. Steph Curry, my man, y'all know I, y'all, I rock with Steph Curry, my man, but that's what happens when you run your mouth. Just play ball. Just play ball. Let the voters, and I'm surprised with Steph because Steph normally don't come out of character like that. Like normally if you ask Steph, he'd give you a generic answer. So I'm a oh. little bit shocked about that. And he had to eat his own words because then he came out and stunk it up. No, I agree with that. For, for, oh, hold on. Let, let's go back to Chris Paul. Let's go back. So how, how I, I want to understand, and, and, and you know I'm a Chris Paul fan. That's one of my favorite players. Mm-hmm. But Tim, give me screen, give me co-host. Go ahead. You, you go from a team. OKC goes from the sixth seed with 49 wins with Westbrook and Paul George to a fifth seed with 44 wins. So what 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 where, where how they how they get that much better? What what are we? It's a shortened well, season. Well, well, you saying how they can get that much better? They actually got rid of a few players. That wasn't Serge on there when they had Westbrook. I but mean, they, ain't ain't hold on. That's what I'm saying. They they actually went, hold on. Listen, when they brought in Chris Paul, so they went into Saint Shy Gilgis Alexander had nothing to do with that. I didn't say that. I just I, I'm, I'm gonna ask a question. To, to, no, no. You, you said, and Tim said he did. You and no, Tim no, no. said he did. So no. Shy Gilgis Alexander, top 25. He, he's mm-hmm. on the top 10 of the top 25 and under players in the league. Mm-hmm. Had nothing to do with that. Who said that? I think the only one that said that is who Ephraim was addressing. I just said you, I you don't disagree with him. No, I didn't. You don't. You don't listen. I said I wouldn't say that he <laughs> carried them. I said, but he definitely was the leader and the integral part in leading them to that position. And that, and that's why I'm saying why he was that leader like that. Like he may not get the assist. If you watch how they play, it's, it's a motion uh, game. He gets the floor separated. He he directs everybody. All the stuff that we say Ben don't do the the floor general stuff. He does that, and I mean he does that for Phoenix too. Like look at look at uh Phoenix. They got pretty much the same squad. You put them on there, and all of a sudden they like a well oiled machine. So, but I agree with Ephraim. I wouldn't say that he carried them because he did have 
uh, other players. Like he had Shea Gilgis, and he helped Dort, but I think he helped Dort a great amount to develop. Dorio, Dort, young boy, that was a rookie. I, I, I think there. he's a great. I think he's a great floor general. He get he get players in position. So all that is, and he has big shots. Don't, don't show up in the stats. But yeah, what last, I make year, Chris Paul, last year the NBA MVP. only played seventy three games because of the, because of the lockout, not the lockout, but because of Corona virus. The league only played seventy three games. All right, and they only went up, they only went up one. They went from six the year before the fifth. But I'm just, they they play less games. Okay, he okay. Said, he talking about their position. He ain't the position the six to fifth. Yeah, it's still the same. Everybody playing the same amount of games. But as far as victories, I'm I'm saying. So, uh, it was a huge jump like they was in second and first place like phoenix and he was by himself phoenix was already put together he just he just was a cog in the machine uh phoenix ain't, make, phoenix ain't even make the playoffs last year though as a matter of fact chris paul was the fourth leading scorer on that team that but year, they was already so. put what i'm saying is they already had a team built i know and chris they paul had, came in there and was a beautiful will to help that thing i, I agree help the I, I would never disrespect chris paul and say he's not an integral part in them winning but my thing is, it is a huge thing difference to say. That's like saying Clay Thomas is carrying Golden State when Thompson. Steph Curry is there. Clay Thompson. That, that's not. That's not the. He's an integral part in them winning. With without Clay, they don't go seventy three and nine. Without Clay, they don't go to two back to back championships. But it's Steph Curry who's the, the one who's the dominating force as to why they win. So I'm not going to go on record to say Chris Paul carried this yeah. team that had a person who scored 19, averaged 19 a game, 18 a game, and another 18 a game, and then Chris Paul came in averaging 17. There's no way in the world I'm going to say he carried that team. Oh, but no Tim, way. though, Tim, I mean, uh, Tim, <laughs> B, though, let, let's B with this game. I, I, I'm sorry, but. Be back in a running for MVP. I can't, <laughs> you can't. I know. I know. I know. We always go. You always go back and forth. But you, you still got to keep beat up there. Be. I, I was never taking running. I just didn't think he was number one anymore. He carried this team. He did. Just put them up back. real quick. That's all. Whatever buzzing. Can y'all just get rid of it? I'm just, I'm, that's somebody I, I hate the phone. Anything. I think this, this is Chris Paul stats. This is the year they went just to just to give everybody a clear view. Of what happened, so you don't have to search. I I did the homework for you, all right. Mm -hmm. So you got somebody averaging got what's his name, uh, Shay Gill, yeah, Gilded Alexander, Gilded. averaging nineteen, Schroeder averaging eighteen, Gallinari averaging eighteen, and Chris Paul averaging seventeen and six point seven assists a game. Granted, like I said, good stats, not hating on it at all. But for you to say that he carried a team with three players ahead of him, almost averaging twenty. Is saying too much. That's all I'm saying. I think we all agree with you with that. So, um, I just want to tell Jamar since well, he went already addressed Jamar, and we already talked. Well, here he go. You talked about, you talk about Steph. About you that? find a way to put Steph in there. Now you talk about. Oh, okay. he get it. He can get it. He get it. And I agree. Feels hurt. Steph get brought up. No, no, no. I, I, I agree. Steph played himself, and I do agree. The B might have gained a little traction back on the MVP joint, even though they lost. Because I mean, Steph lost too, but he was. Brick City, the basement. He was Brick City, but you, that's right, what right, happens when you run your mouth. So about keep your Sixers, mouth closed right? and play basketball. So about the Sixers, right? We, I, I, I'm still. I'm a. It looked like didn't B have his brace on today? Because he yes. kind of looked like he was moving. Did he? He looked like he had it on the me. I didn't think. I, I didn't. I, I didn't think I saw the brace. No? That brace was real bulky. It didn't look like he had it. But and plus the way attention. he was moving, he came out there. He was doing a euro and stepping through everything and everything else. But and did y'all have any problem? Embiid and Shake in the third quarter got real sloppy with the ball. Embiid had like two back-to-back -to -back was as did Shake, and that kind of that kind of wait. I, don't dismiss what I'm saying. No, <laughs> I want to agree with that. I'm not dismissing. <laughs> I want to agree with that, and I meant to say it on our text board. Why did it look like Embiid don't like playing with Shake? Is it me? Ooh. It looked like he was getting mad at Shake during that game, man. I'm telling you, the Shake body language ain't look good. Because remember, Shake lost low. one of the balls out of bounds. Yeah, Shake almost lost a rebound out of bounds. He caught that. Yeah, he did like, lose a rebound out of bounds. Yeah, he did. But Embiid threw the ball to the referee in the middle of like crucial part of the game. He throws Somebody it right in the right spot. Remember, B and Shake got into that big thing. Was that last year? Yeah. Did they? Shake, Shake need to sit down. Shake ain't balling. He's he need to sit down for a little bit. Shake ain't bobbing with nobody right now. I don't I don't know what's going on with him, but he's not bobbing with nobody. It, that's what 
like I we we you know we're saying we want to see what George Hill do. I think George Hill is actually going to be a nice piece for us coming no. off of that bench. I told y'all who was hating. Let me ask. I wasn't hating, but I was skeptical. Let me ask y'all this. That's called hate. Kevin Durant. <laughs> I, I watched. I watched the Kevin Durant interview, right? And he said, like playing them games, five games and seven nights and things like that. When he's with this, when he was in Golden State, he said, "You got to get up from them game for them games." And he also said something that was interesting to me. He said, "Draymond Green." He felt was integral to him, but because he was one who always got him up for games. He said he would say stuff and do stuff, you know, like that. Hey, you stinging up, uh, stinging up out there, say stuff like that. He's like, then I hit eight straight. You see Draymond back there smiling, like, yeah, I got it. Like he's the one that motivates everybody on a team. That's what's up. We need somebody to get mascot like that. I was about to ask that. That was the next question. Mike Scott do should we... be that. Mike Scott should be that mascot. He ain't doing that. I think he's gonna be George be Hill. Team. I think George Hill's a, a, a natural born leader. I mean, because I don't, some people self motivators, right? Yeah. Um, is Bede and Ben self motivators? No, I think Bede so. is. I think Bede a little bit. I, I, I think he's, he does need, though, more of an outside uh, source in his area. Cause you, you saw, remember, was it last year when Barkley and Shaq and him was coming at him? And then he started for a couple games, he started dominating. So he kind of does need that, I think, still a little bit. I, I think he's he's more of a self-motivated player than, than Ben, obviously. Um, but I do think we need that that guy. I don't I think, think they both about the guy. same with the self-motivation. They when somebody starts talking about him, then all of a sudden they come out and you know, I mean, and B's a dominant player, he's a more dominant player, but I, I think. That's just like I think B came out tonight because he heard people talking about dismissing him as a, as an MVP. And that's why like I want to be playing. Yeah, and all. And that's, no, that's, see, that's, see, but yeah. I'm not see. I'm not hating on B from last game though. Last, my thing is as long as you aggress. The only thing I hated on B a little bit from the Golden State game, I don't think he took took advantage of Draymond enough. But B was very aggressive last game. He shot up. He shot what 19 times or something. My thing is, and this is this is another narrative I want to kind of put at rest to right. If somebody has a bad game in the playoffs or a regular season game or championship game, and everybody, oh, they, 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 the person fell apart. Like yo, you miss shots sometimes. My, my thing is, I just want my superstar to be aggressive. I, if you don't, if you have a bad game, remember Kawhi last year when they lost to Denver. Kawhi, everybody was coming at Kawhi, but Kawhi shot the ball. He was just off. The, the, the one time Bron had his meltdown against Dallas, I, the reason why I didn't, I took offense to that because Bron didn't shoot. I think I don't even think he shot double digit t- shots in that Dallas game. That was my one biggest thing with that. But if my superstar is shooting and he's missing, I'm cool with you shooting. Now, if you're making very bad decisions, that's one thing. But B was shooting the ball. He was just off. He tried to make some layup against Golden State. He was off. Tonight he came back. Same thing, aggressive. The shots went down. So I, I'm not, I, I think B to me has been very consistent in trying to horse for the most part of this year. That's why he almost averaged 30 points a game. But it, 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 with the rest of the team, and maybe even like Ethan was saying, that some of these close back-to-back games, it, it, you probably do need somebody. But that's where the coaching staff should come in. That's where your assistant coaches. I can't leave everything on Doc. Like, who's your assistant coaches? Why do you do San Cassell and them in Bulls airs, motivating them? Is that happening? I, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying this, this, this is their role as well, too. Well, let me say one thing. The reason why we lost this game is one thing and one thing only. Free throw shooting. Yeah, we, was, we shot no, sixty nine. Listen, we saw sixty nine point two percent. We was eighteen for twenty six from the line. I mean, remember the end of the third quarter, we had a chance to hit four and Hill missed George two, Hill. and um and somebody Dwight else missed, and Dwight Howard. Both of them missed. Yeah, but two. they were our, they were our main misses. Everybody else pretty much made made a good percentage. Them two no, are the ones 18, that we was eighteen for twenty six. We shot six nine percent. Everybody stunk. No, they didn't. We we stunk. I'm looking it was B with, with the B. Oh, no, it was, it was, it was, it was it, like Ethan said. It was mainly them two. D- Dwight Howard shot one for five, and uh, Hill shot one for three. But All everybody right. else, you had Cork right. three for three. Maxie was four for four. Scott was two for two. Uh, oh, you're right. B was seven for nine, so it was just them two players. And the refs seemed like they didn't even like B. They turnovers, were... though. We had yeah. 16, they had eight or nine yeah. turnovers. Yeah. Well, you know. When you don't got your starting point guard. Because we beat them. We had more <laughs> rebounds. <laughs> True. 
You should have started. You should have started Hill. Actually, you should have started Hill. I don't know why he did. We well, have more two rebounds. starting guards, though. Huh? I said we missing two starting guards. Yeah. Yeah. Seth, so, Seth, well, Seth, Seth is not a point guard. For like guy. five minutes to start a point guard. Yeah, like, no, I'm done with. And, Seth and if Curry. it's his brother, and if it's his brother that's going to let him go ahead and get off a little bit, I know his brother. Like, go ahead, man. Before, before a young before boy, before he put him away. <laughs> <laughs> before we end, Tim, how the cork mouse play tonight? Cork mouse is trash. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not impressed. Every every once he goes up and down. Like for today, he, he's how he blow a layup. <laughs> he had an open, wide open layup. And he sprains his own ankle off of like the nothing. So you ripping him <laughs> for getting hurt, and and then but then he still came back, and when he came back in and hit shots. I'm I, I'll say this: I mean that get, bro. I'll I'll give us a tremendous amount of credit. We fought two for nail to the very end, even when we was down by like eight at one point late in the game. Yeah. We battled back, made that joint close, and that miracle, almost miracle shot by him beat. If that joint would have went in. And we went to overtime. I think we might have, may have won if we went to overtime. But we fought. We fought hard. We, we was outgunned, undermanned. They they were supposed to win that game. They, they were supposed to win that game. I, mean, I, ain't, gonna hold you know. I ain't gonna hold you. When but I when he put Embiid back in, I, I still feel like he put him in a little bit too late. If you're gonna try to put him in and try to win it, I would have preferred he came in a little bit sooner. Because but as soon as Embiid came back in, it was like he started knocking down the threes, going to the basket, getting the foul calls. But then he almost made that joint at the end, man. That man, them that refs joint. though, those, those refs, they they play, they 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 called a horrible game. They Ruff played on the rest, terrible dude. game. You can't always put it on the refs. No, ref this game, you could put it on the refs, and that, I bet you anybody in the comments they'll say the refs called an absolute horrible game today. I mean, it was and B was getting slapped the smack. I I agree a lot with. I mean, the refs in general to me, I I <clears throat> I know basketball. <clears throat> excuse me, the very hard game to officiate because there's so much action and it's continuous and there's so many things you got to account for, but some stuff, it just is what it is. Like, I, I don't know. The, I don't want to beat a dead horse with the refs. I, I've been very vocal about what I think about the calling and refing and, and the reviewing of the te technicals and flagrants and all that dumb stuff. But some stuff you just got to like, like for me as a player like B, you almost got to watch for him to get hit because you know he's going to get hit. He the biggest dude in the court. So not saying you got to give him every little ticky-tack joint, but you know the smacks and the slaps and the reaching. You know that's coming. So I, I would assume that he would get a little bit more of the benefit of the but doubt. Sometimes, that, he, he, sometimes he creates his own problem, though, with all the flipping wow. and flopping and expecting to call every time. I think sometimes that might wear even Possibly. though Even though sometimes he might got to do it just to make sure he get that call, though. That's the thing, yeah. Call. That's the thing. Sometimes yeah. you do got to act it out just to get the joint because you don't. You, if you don't, you're not getting. They just it's like Shaq. Remember, they would be grabbing over Shaq, but they just expected Shaq to take it because he was big. And it's right. like, all right, you a big boy, stop girl. And it's like, yo, but you grabbing me though. But needless to say, I, I thought it was, I mean, everybody plays hard. So I can't, I'm I'm not mad. When we get, you know, Tobias and the other bull back, uh Ben Simmons. Uh, yeah, whatever his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, but for real, for real, the way we are, the way, our, the way our, the way our, you know, they never, you know, Ben never gonna come on the podcast because y'all two. The way our, the way our, gonna listen. The way our bench played in our defense was, I wouldn't be worried about. The, I, I'm not gonna say I wouldn't be worried, but I feel like I like our chances against them. They they were very undersized. If if you got Tobias and Ben Agreed. in there, I think we. I, I think against, we, against Phoenix, we ain't going to meet them unless we get to the chip. So. Yeah, well, I mean, anybody in the West is like that. But that's what I'm saying, if we get there. And, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Brooklyn lost? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he lost. What, what did the MVP do tonight, Tim? What what the superstar do tonight? To Kyrie? Yeah. I mean, every everybody have a bad – like, <laughs> Steph ain't have a great night tonight either. Yeah. So, Steph I mean, was deserving of having an off night, though. But that's I mean, what he get for running his mouth. You just play basketball and you let the gear game – and the voters dictate what's going to happen. You don't talk about MVP stuff until you until the end of the year. That's why he got he got the jinx put on it. Cacao. You my man stuff. Y'all got any final thoughts before we roll this joint? Um, we, we, one more thing. Wiggins is trash. This boy missed a layup worse than Cork Miles at the at the rim too. Here. By the way, so Wiggins is super duper trash. He cost me. I think game. one thing. Outside I think Doc. I think Doc has to get the rotation set. Who he wants to play? Get it yeah. now. Get that rotation set now. It's either going to be Shake, Maxi, Court, Hill. Get the rotation set now for the playoffs. For Figure it out. 
he well, got, got these last couple the games whole team to get together. That. The whole team has been playing together. They don't need the whole team together. He got to figure out. All he needs is the bench play. They're the ones that are going to play. Ben and Toby already started. No, so you got to figure out who's going to get the rotation. Got to figure I, it out I, with I these kinda, last games. I kind of like Maxie with uh, George Hill. I kind of like too. that pairing. I don't. I like George Hill starting. I think that the biggest decision Doc will have to make is to sit his young boy. His young boy, Seth, that's his son-in-law. He gonna have to sit this dude. He I gonna have Hill to start. sit. Him. I was screaming me when I was talking about George Hill two days ago. I wouldn't Tim. mind Hill starting with y'all. Tim, who? You're right. Who? Was, I been Tim. said I was all right with George Hill. Tim, just, no, y'all. Tim. Like, what he gonna do? What you, you was Timmy. Don't, Timmy. Don't I was what? Timmy. I've been said that I thought George Hill was an excellent pickup. I said we need a backup point guard because when our bench comes in with no point guard, we get rocked. Hold on, hold on, Tim. Don't, don't. don't I, I give you credit. You was right, but don't pat yourself in the back too much because you was the same one who was mad when we got George Hill because yes. you thought we should have kept the ball. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I, I, no, no, no. Like Tony he was Bradley. mad because he thought we should have kept Brandley, and he also kept saying, I want Kyle Lowry, we messed up. <laughs> no, yeah, so no, now all of a sudden no. you George Hill. <laughs> Y'all Stop. lie. Stop. No, exactly. I no, said I wanted George that. Hill. I didn't want t- Tony Bradley to be part of the trade. I, I know, think- but you was no, but you was still crying a little bit about George Hill at first. So I'm gonna give you a prop for saying, yeah, he's gonna come and do his thing, but I'm yeah. also giving you a little backhanded compliment no, because you was doing some nope. hating on the trade from the nope, rip. Nope, nope. But even okay. kind of to nope, your point nope, about them nope. starting George Hill, I said I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because Got I started starting. I, I need one starting. of them, I need a point guard with the bench because I don't trust Maxi to play point. And, and I, you can always rotate that in and out. But with then, George, but, George okay, Hill and back. That's my other thing, though. Got, you got it starting. That, when are we going to do that? We don't have a whole team of a plan together. We're trying to pull a, a, a Nets now, like where we we setting dudes, games, and resting dudes up. When are they going to get true. that cohesion and that rotation? That That's going to be just the- And nobody got it this year. That's true, too. This is where Doc will have to earn, earn his stripes. He that we championship had it, pedigree. We had it, though. <laughs> I, I say like this. Nobody in the, in the East had it this year. The Sixers did have a rotation. Sixers, the bet, the sad thing is the Sixers probably had the the team together the longest in the East than any other team. But that's what I'm saying. They had the rotation, though. We knew who was starting and who was coming off the bench. But right now like, we got a perfect mixture of vets and and young boys and on a team. And then you got then you also have the Benz and Embiid, the the and the Benz and Embiid. It's a nice mixture. You got the young, you got the veterans, you got that middle range. I think we're gonna be all right. I am not at all like everybody keeps saying. I'm not mad at this game because we all went in thinking they was going to lose and they played yeah. well so now we just move on and now we definitely got to handle our business going against the bucks tomorrow and back again and on back. saturday we at tomorrow saturday yep all right so the Sixers take that l tonight it's all right we'll be back at it tomorrow is b so, gonna play tomorrow we don't know that yet um wait and see i guess we <laughs> gotta know is ben and toby yeah, gonna play ben tomorrow? and toby playing they better after sitting out a couple bro no nah. nah, if they, right. they sick they sick all right, so we out this joint. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Listen, the channel is growing. We appreciate all the support. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I don't even know if I did the plug when I started. YouTube, Spotify. No, you didn't. Probably Facebook, didn't. Twitter. It's too late now. They all turned it off. I know, right? We're the Uncensored Philly Sports Podcast. We out. <laughs>